In this presentation, I'm going to go over von Neumann Morgenstern utility functions. Just a little brief overview. Now, you can use ordinal preferences. And when I teach game theory and I teach two by two games, I keep it simple by showing just, hey, these are ordinal preferences. So if we look at a prisoner's dilemma, you know, we say, what are the outcomes? There are four, and we rank order them, and we just assign numbers, so a higher number is a more preferred outcome. And the numbers only reflect order, right? So if there are four outcomes, the best one's a four, right? Worst one's a one. That works for a lot of simple games, and kind of is the least, you know, keeps the focus on, hey, it's just about the player preferring one outcome over another without getting it into any, any fancy estimation of numbers or anything. However, sometimes ordinal preferences aren't going to cut the mustard. They aren't going to capture intensity or what we call cardinality of preferences. And this is important when you talk about things like repeated games, where you're going to say, all right, we get payoffs in the future. And so we need to discount those payoffs. So we need some quantification of value right, that someone sees in order to be able to mathematically represent the choice, right? Do I cooperate in this round in hopes of getting cooperation in the future? And if I don't cooperate, I won't get the cooperation in the future. So I won't get that bigger payoff. And so I'll fit, suffer a loss. Well, we just need numbers to represent all this. It, that's all there is to it. We got to have some quantification. So we go with the von neumann morgenstern utility theorem and the the issue here is we know players can make choices between outcomes and that's preferences and it's subjective and that's we want to keep it as close to that not really putting too much in it we could do what economics does and say okay people are maximizing their wealth they're maximizing money Right? And we could specify a particular utility function. But what von Neumann Morgenstern are trying to do is keep it down to just the individual's choices, whatever they are, without specifying a function. But we still want to quantify it. Right? And so their theorem, they, they worked on a theorem and said, look, decision makers choosing between risky options. Right? And risky options here means basically it's let's make a deal. Right. I can have the certainty of getting one thing or a chance of getting another. Right. Um, and so in Let's Make a Deal, the, the host, whether it be Monty Hall as was or Drew Carey later on, offers, you know, a choice. You can have money with certainty or what's behind door number one. Well, what's behind door number one? We don't know. That's the risk. Right. So the point is. If we define a little bit about what might be behind door number one, right, a good thing or a bad thing, basically, right, or a good thing and nothing, then we can start saying, okay, if we look at how people choose, we can start to see how much they value one thing over another, and we can estimate an underlying fu utility function. And they, the, the theorem says that decision makers choosing between risky options will behave, will behave as if they are making and they are maximizing an underlying function right so they're making choices in accordance with some underlying function which we don't know but it's as if they are right they may not know it. the thing is though there's a certain consistency that they have to make these choices with that are covered in four axioms that i will talk about in a separate video now if people are acting consistently, uh, if we think that people are acting in, in a fairly consistent manner in terms of, of, of choosing between things, then we can create this utility function, right? And so the von Neumann Morgenstern utility function, and we often talk about von Neumann. Uh, I used to graduate school, we would say von Neumann. So I'm still not sure, but we'll go with von Neumann. It sounds cooler. Um, when we have a von Neumann Morgenstern utility function, we have numbers. Right. And these numbers measure cardinality. And the key of this utility function is we're going to assign values to outcomes based on how an individual would choose between lotteries of outcomes. Let me explain with an example. OK, suppose for a player, I, let's just say I, A is preferred to B. Right. And that's an ordinal preference, an ordinal ranking. 
the thing is though, we want to get, you know, how much more is A preferred to B? So what we start talking about is, well, what if the player was asked to make a choice between, you know, it's a risky choice because there's a probability in it. So the, the player has a certainty of A, of B, right? We give B like the host of let's make a deal offering money, right? You can have B or you can have an, a lottery over A, meaning with some probability P, you get A, right? And so P is a fraction. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a number between zero and one, right? And so you can have some chance of getting A, but, you know, equal to P, but there's a one minus P chance, right? If you have a one out of three chance of getting A, that's a one third. Well, the chance of getting nothing would be one minus one third, it's two thirds. You have a two third chance of getting nothing. Now, the thing about the probability is we're trying to find it, right? We know the person prefers A over B. The question is what probability of P will make A indifferent? Right. And so, you know, we can talk. And if you're again, if you're having trouble with coin uh, with lotteries, it's like a coin toss. But uh, the the coin varies. Right. And maybe instead of a coin, we roll a, a dice or a die or it's, it's like you have a D&D &D friend who's got every shape of die. We got four sided die. We got eight sided die. We got 12, we got 20, 30 sided die. Right. Or you pretty much buy any number of die you want. Um, point is that the probability can vary and we want to observe the probability that makes a person indifferent, right? So what do I mean here? Suppose someone's indif indifferent between the certainty of getting B and a coin toss over A. Let's say it's a coin toss, so it's 0.5, right? Now we know something, right? If the certainty of B is equivalent to a 50% chance of getting A, well, then the utility for A must be twice what the utility is for B. That's the logic that we apply here, right? So if we see people making these choices, if we find where they're indifferent, where they can't make a choice, where the, you know, the money being offered by the host is, you know, is good, but they still want a, you know, that, that indecision moment where they hesitate, right? And say, no, no, right? That's indifference. That's equ it's equivalent value on either side. And so if we if we find that there we have that equivalent value that that indifference when you have a choice between certainty of B and a 50% chance of A, then it makes sense that A's utility, whatever thing we want to give to whatever number we want to apply for it should be twice what B the number we put in for B. And that is the logic that we're going to do here. And so it comes down to this. We say, hey, this is the equation that we would get from that we would say all right the utility to i that's u sub i and utility is always specific to an individual of a is equal to two times the utility to i of b right that's the equation and any number that satisfies that equation for a and for ui of a and ui of b any two numbers that satisfy that equation will be fine right so it could be two and one or six and three, as I have written down here. That is what you're doing. And, and that's, those would be von Neumann Morgenstern utilities, right? And the point is there's no absolute value. There's no unit here. We haven't, there's not utils or dollars or it's, it is unit free. It is just about the ratio between these numbers. Key points. This utility function represents choices over outcomes. It is still based on subjective preferences, not objective payoffs. It is an as if model. We are not saying that this is how people are. This is not an ontological statement about how people make choices. And in fact, there are four requirements that will be discussed in a separate thing. The axioms that are that people have to, you know, that their, their choices have to uh, obey or be consistent with in order for this to work, right? And so it is strictly an as if model it is not a statement of this is the way people think it is not an ontological statement. You can derive these numbers. You could look at a person's choices between 
in risky outcomes, you could theoretically actually measure this off of a person. So it has that benefit of it is not a unobservable thing underlying behavior, right? So it is theoretically at least observable. Of course, doing this would be difficult. It would require a lot of observations of a lot of choices with known probabilities. And you know the probability and you know that the decision maker knew the probability. And so there's a lot to it. Although people do estimate these things and do come to it. And uh, when Bruce Bueno de Mesquita estimates a scale, he's doing something very much like this, right? He's not specifically doing a von Neumann Morgenstern utility function, but his, his, he's, he's specifying a utility function on a policy scale or whatever. He's doing something very similar to this and is backed up by the von Neumann Morgenstern utility theorem. So that's the quick overview here.